This episode is in dedication to all who love the thrill of road cycling and to a special road adventure girl who truly inspired my journey into cycling with her great stories of resolve, resilience, and the pure enjoyment of living life fully. You know who you are. (laughs) Thank you so much, Rochelle. I love this quote from Swami Rama. Contentment is falling in love with your life. It is how I began to live my life some time ago. And before finding this quote, I love when instinct and inner wisdom align with awe-inspiring teachings that already exist, reminding us of our ability to tap into the infinite consciousness and wisdom that we need along our path. In 2021, I began (laughs) yet another new sport that I hadn't considered before the onset of the pandemic. I wanted to experience something new and autonomous in the wake of continual gym closures. I had a bicycle, but never a road bike. I fell in love with road cycling and not just the activity, but the fresh air and the ability to see so much beyond my front door. Interestingly, it is an activity that feels authentic to what I need right now. In road cycling, you challenge yourself with the path before you, and you decide how you will embrace and meet that challenge. Your body becomes one with your bike as you create the momentum and the flow that brings you to the crest of a hill and then the descent that is pure exhalation. For me, it was a way to exercise (laughs) without feeling as though I am exercising in the typical ways that I would. And I love the fact that I am engaging so many muscle groups at once that work together in synergy to support my every move. On a recent ride, as I was climbing uphill and in reflection of Santosha, as I have been since beginning my series on the Niyamas that you can find here, I found myself saying aloud, I am content. And it was true. I can and I am content riding uphill as a part of the experience of cycling. It is not just the rush of speed on the other side as you make your descent. It is literally Each moment lived fully in the present, especially as most sports require and even demand your attention and presence to what you are doing. And then I remembered one reason I did not choose to pursue this sport earlier. I would watch cyclists and think, the uphill must be hard. Sometimes it is, and then there is always the balance of the descent, the other side, and as you soften into a different experience of contentment. One is not more important than the other. Both are symbolic of the experiences we live. If you can enjoy, if you can feel contentment in the work of climbing up a hill, or the challenging part of any sport or activity, then it may be said that you are truly enjoying the activity in its purest form. To say the words to yourself, I am content in any moment, becomes a visceral and definitive reminder of a state of being that you choose deliberately. And as you truly align with your words, you are already that much closer to happiness and joy. We choose contentment because we are present with the experiences of each moment, without judging them right or wrong, good or bad. When I put a label onto an experience, when I decided that a part of cycling would be difficult and therefore undesirable, I had rejected the experience without giving it a chance. Have you ever judged and or rejected something or someone before you really had an honest experience of it? 
Do we make decisions about something or someone without having the full experience, without an open mind, without the idea of possibility? I share a simple example, yet it offers insight into how frequently we all judge and assume incorrectly. And as we do so, it removes us from the possibility and the joy that we could know. All of you out there who cycle know that its enjoyment is far beyond the challenge of a steep hill or the descent beyond the crest. Hello, this is Dorothy. In addition to the weekly format of this podcast in which I offer practical and spiritual wisdom that I lovingly share with you each Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I am so excited to offer a second format of amazing content. It's called Ask Dorothy. These episodes reveal the inner workings of what really happens inside a session of therapy and life coaching with me. Here I dive into the richness of content that each client brings to our sessions and how we best navigate what insights, teachings, solutions, and of course, healing and wholeness abounds. I know that listening will offer you much wisdom and guidance in the ways that bring to life what you need and also how to implement the best practices and teachings that I share to honor all of what you seek and all of what you are becoming. In each of the Ask Dorothy episodes, you will also hear my candid observations and commentary and the process for how we arrive in a place of harmony, relief, clarity, understanding, and the true change that happens in each and every session because of a client's willingness to grow, to evolve, to move beyond their comfort zone and into the revelation of what they already know, what they learn to be capable of, and what they desire most for their life. My job is always to support a client's progress and to provide the right tools and best therapeutic practices to ensure that each client will reach their goals, including to be all that they wish to become. I hope you'll enjoy the Ask Dorothy series as an opportunity to have the knowledge and insight of what we can do together. If you have a question that needs my love and helpful guidance, please write to me. All right, so let's jump into this episode and Ask Dorothy. In this episode of Ask Dorothy, I am again posing some questions for you. What can you hold your heart open to? What can you live in full appreciation and contentment of here and now? Have you already made room in your mind and heart to enjoy this moment, this experience, this hour, this day, the rest of your life? And something important about the teaching of Santosha, the Sanskrit word for contentment, it calls upon us to acquire the skill of abiding calm, an unshakable center that exists when you realize that there is nothing missing in each moment. There is nothing missing in your life. There is also space for you to create whatever you wish for and then to take the steps that will bring what is wanted to you. If you live with the perception that everything is, as I remind my clients, perfect as it is, this is the practice of Santosha, to allow life to reveal itself to you in each moment, without you needing to control or seek or grasp something different. This is the path and the joy of living content. 
I remind clients who become mired in their focus upon what is wrong with their lives or who require certain circumstances in order to feel content. For example, they will be happy once their son graduates from high school because right now he is behind one full semester. Or they will be happy when their divorce is complete because it has been dragging on for several months and draining their energy. Or happy when they lose the weight they have gained and lost and gained again because they continue to self-soothe through eating. If you remove yourself from the opportunity and the experience of contentment because you are not where you want or need to be, It is no different than when I decided I would not enjoy cycling because of the effort of hills to climb, (laughs) without contemplating how one can be content in the moment of the climb. We climb hills every day metaphorically, challenges before us, tasks and responsibilities that need our attention and effort. Now it is the hills that give me one of the most satisfying experiences of the ride. If you choose to approach your life content, it will lead you into authentic happiness and it will invite you to experience more of life's wonder and beauty and it will allow you to be content even if you feel discouraged frustrated, lonely, or sad. And here's the big test. Can you feel a deep sense of contentment in who you are and in your life, even as you feel other emotions and states of being that are less desirable? For example, when you are in a state of bliss that equates to loving life when in a new love relationship— Do you not weather the ups and downs of life far more easily? Do you do so because you remind yourself that you are loved and that is more than enough? You can and must hold the same perspective for yourself at any point in your life. You decide which state of being will be your choice. I'm hopeful you will choose to live in contentment as the deepest expression of what you feel. In and of this moment, contentment will always supersede what is less desired. You can be content even as situations and circumstances are not always how you think they should be. And then you could allow yourself to focus intensely in the moment to give it all of your attention, much like what is needed as you ride uphill because you need to be fully present and committed in those moments in order to master them. That in and of itself is Santosha. The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali from where we find the eight-limb path of yoga and the Niyamas promise that if we allow ourselves to fall deeply in love with everything, it will happen and joy will be the result. As Lao Tzu says in the Tao Te Ching, be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are. When you realize there is nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you. I leave you with four of my favorite and best practices to guide you into Santosha. First, remind yourself of what is true. If an upsetting thought arises, rather than ignore it or the opposite, focus intently on the thought and the many other thoughts that will continue to snowball. Lean in. Pay attention to what you are telling yourself because your thoughts determine how you feel. The cognitive therapy best practice that I teach includes how to question your thoughts and to challenge their accuracy. One question you can use is, 
Is this thought 100% true? When you uncover what is really true, you can also learn to love what is. So ask yourself, is this thought true? Can I absolutely know that it's true? And then if you wish, go deeper still. Ask yourself, how would I feel without my original thought? And can I hold love in the space and time of now and in this particular moment? When you actively seek out the love that lies beneath your inaccurate or false thoughts, you will find it. Second, nurture the experiences of appreciation and gratitude. When you live in a constant state of appreciation and gratitude, you feel fulfillment, happiness, and a sense of fullness in having what you need in your life. Some practical habits to nurture appreciation and to make gratitude an ongoing experience are the following. Take a two-minute break and say aloud or write what you are grateful for in this moment. You can write a gratitude list to begin your day as a bedtime ritual, and you can reread your gratitude lists from previous days. This reminds you to appreciate the wonder and love of life rather than looking for and focusing on problems or undesirable outcomes. Third, cultivate curiosity. When you are curious, you let go of preconceived judgments and opinions and open yourself up to experience life in its purity. You engage your inner inquisitive child that lives pure in the present moment. For example, does the leaf choose to fall? How do birds know when and in which direction to fly south? What does the rain do for the earth? Fall in love with the mystery and marvel of life. Love your role as an explorer. Discover what drives your curiosity, whether nature, science, math, history, psychology, yoga, and see if you can bring this level of wonder to everything that you see and do. And fourth, in meditation and yoga. In meditation, we can take Santosha to its fullest expression by falling in love with love itself. Sit in a comfortable posture with your eyes closed. Turn your attention away from your thoughts and inward onto your breath as a point of living focus and begin to gently search for your inward state of loving consciousness. Become the observer of your soul and the most inner dwelling state of what you are, with a gentle gaze of love. You can look upon your consciousness as something that wants you to love it without expecting anything from it, like someone who wants to be loved for what they are, not for what they give you. This is a suggestion from Michael Langford in his book, How to Live a Life That Knows Only Love. In this way, peace will come unexpectedly, joy will come unexpectedly, and infinite love will come unexpectedly. As a yogi, you can always be practicing santosha on your mat. When you look for your edge in a posture, you are looking to the challenge, to the part of you that finds discomfort. As your thighs burn holding yukatasana, you can continue to remain in the moment as you practice contentment with where you are and what is. 
seek the love that lies in this posture and observe how, when thinking changes, pain eases. Heart-opening postures such as Ustrasana, the camel, or Chakrasana, the wheel, are also wonderful to aid us in our ability to fall in love with everything. What are your lived expressions of Santosha? Drop me a comment here and let me know, as well as what did this episode inspire in you? I'd love to hear from you. Sending you great love. This is Dorothy. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode of the Wisdom Podcast. To hear more, please check out the other episodes right here. And I'd love for you to subscribe and share your feedback on this or any episode with me. And then join me at DorothyRatusny.com, where you'll find the wisdom blog, the inspiration for this podcast, the latest online courses that I teach, my YouTube videos, and the Wisdom Archives, which are an extensive library of guided meditations, mindfulness musings, spiritual teachings, and best therapeutic practices for your whole being, and to nourish and heal your life, plus many other special offerings of love. Please also visit me on social media and say hello. Allow yourself to go within, to access your inner wisdom, and to live this. Awaken your authentic power, live your truth, and be love. Thank you. This is Dorothy.